Proby and the retired chief were lost in the crowd, headed down to the Trade Center. I think at that point, the lobby was pretty empty. There were just a few of us in the lobby, and, and we were discussing tactics. Some of the outlying companies didn't know what Tower 1 was and Tower 2. So we were just trying to help them out by writing it on the desk to make it obvious to, to people. It was just before 10 o'clock. A little over an hour since the first plane hit. Firefighters from all over the city were inside those towers. Hundreds of them. You remember I'm filming Chief Pfeiffer? And he's on the radio. situation that uh, started bad just gets worse and worse and worse. The World Trade Center, South Tower, which was hit by a plane and wrecked by an explosion approximately an hour ago, has totally collapsed. What happened? If you're just joining us this morning, uh, here are for a, a horrific surprise. right out of one of the movies you would see in Hollywood. People walking around with uh, cell phones and tears, uh, holding their heads, looking up at what's left of the World Trade Center, and just shaking their heads in disbelief. Out on the street, everyone knew what just happened. The South Tower was gone. They saw it collapse. Time slowed down and everything became pitch black. Everybody all right? Yeah, I'm okay. How's the way out of here? And then realized, okay, um, I'm not dead. Oh, yeah, right here. So let's uh, turn on my uh, floodlight on top of my camera. All right, come on down this way. Uh, yeah, let's get out the way we came in. <laughs> okay, on. Come on back. Everybody down. Inside the Trade Center, yeah. all Jules and Chief Pfeiffer knew. Well, yeah, right here. All anyone knew was that something had gone terribly wrong. Go right. They asked me, you with the light, to help us out. We gotta get everybody out! Was pointing my light wherever they needed. I remember seeing Chief Pfeiffer. Command post to all units. Evacuate the building. Command post to all units. He gave it right away, very calm, didn't wait. And it was for him, it was a precaution. It was okay, something wrong is happening. Let's get everybody out. From the tone of his voice, I knew that it was no normal thing. I knew it was time to leave. I remember saying to the guys, well, it's, uh, we're on our own now. And for the first time, I looked in someone else's eyes and saw fear. Whew. Which you don't see with the firemen. We orderly evacuated. Well, it was such a long walk, 21, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. I was going down the stairs. I could remember a fireman resting on the landing and uh, telling them, you know, we 
prefer to Mayday get out of the building. And, uh, I don't think they, a lot of them, I know for a fact, did not take it serious. Lodge. Lodge. Hey, Pete. Come on. I was not even consciously filming. I was just had my camera by my side and pointing the light wherever they needed. Sorry. Yeah. Needed my light to, uh, to, to actually help someone, and then I realized it was Father Judge. We saw him lying at the, the base of the escalator where we were. And I, I removed his white collar and I opened up his shirt. And I remember checking for his pulse and realizing at that time uh, um, he was gone. All right, we got four guys. Top of the escalator. Top of the escalator. After that, we had to figure out how to get out of where we were. <laughs> because if you go out this way, uh, right where we are now, people are still jumping, debris still falling, and it's too dangerous. You cannot go out this way. In World Trade Center, we took uh, a hit on that last explosion. Chief Pfeiffer tells the people carrying Father Judge, okay, stay here. Which way? I told them that I'll be back and wait here and I'll see if the bridge is, is still here. Chief Pfeiffer went to check one of the footbridges leading out of the Trade Center. If it was still standing, it'd be their best way out. <laughs> 